The build show today coming to you from my garage. That's right, I'm doing a video today on upgrades for your garage, specifically towards air sealing and bug sealing. Now here's a quick background. This is my current house. I remodeled this 14 years ago. And right over there is actually my house under construction. And I've been wanting to have at the new house a very airtight garage. Now I'm insulating over there. I'm actually putting a mini split in that garage so that when I'm doing garage projects, I've got a little heating or cooling, whatever is necessary. But if you have an uninsulated garage door and the typically very leaky garage door, if you air condition it, you're gonna lose all that to the outside. So in the video today, we're gonna to get into a couple of garage upgrades that I think are gonna to lead to a much more comfortable garage. Let's get going. All right guys, so these are actually garage doors that are original to my house when I bought it almost 15 years ago and did a remodel, but didn't really touch much in the garage. And this is pretty typical, I think, for Southern US doors. Just a stamped metal, no insulation, standard tracks. And if you look at this door, you've got a fair amount of play between the door and the weather stripping. These rollers have a fair amount of play in the tracks, which means that at most houses, you've got a lot of light, a lot of daylight coming through. Usually in the bottom corner, sometimes at the weather stripping, just that little flimsy weather stripping, that's the vinyl weather stripping on the outside. And that's what I'm trying to correct on my new house. So I'm using my current house as an experiment. I've got two garage doors and as I was looking on the web, I found this product. I have no affiliation with these guys. This is not a paid advertisement for them, although full disclosure, they did give me a set of their tracks for free when I asked about them. It's called a ThermoTrack. And check this out, what a genius idea. It sounds like they have some patents coming on this, or maybe you already have patented, but it's got a serpentine shape, this kind of, uh, uh, I don't know, a little bit of an S shape. And what you're doing is you're gonna specify this so that it lines up with your rollers. Let me actually close this garage door uh, while we're doing this. And you're gonna see what's gonna happen now is when the door closes, when the door's going down, that's gonna move a little bit. And when it gets to its final closed position, those serpentines are gonna line up right here with the roller. And now it's actually pushing that roller. So feel that. I don't have that play or that slop like I had in the other door. That's pretty cool. This is really just a standard metal track that you're gonna replace your straight track with the serpentine track. Now, one other part of their system though, which is pretty genius, is they've got a special weather stripping that also goes on the inside of the door. Now this is the pretty normal looking, um, just a vinyl strip, right? That's gonna lay against the door. And that's what I had already. But this is the new piece right here. This comes from the ThermoTrack guys. And this actually sticks on the backside of the weatherproof. And you can see it's kind of an L-shaped bulb right here. So that when the door presses on there, it actually presses up tight. Let me grab the sample of this. Let me show you here. This is the sample they actually send, which is smart because it's a little, uh, you know, you gotta kind of figure out. It's not intuitive for somebody who's never done it before necessarily without the sample. And this comes in a long strip. And Robbie, my garage door guy, all he did was cut these new pieces to length. And then this has a, a double-sided high strength adhesive on there that gets um, put on. And now when this is on there and that door pushes against there, you can see what's happening. You've got that double gasket. And now it's gonna seal, and it is sealing, much, much better than before. Now, I don't know if these guys make any other door bottoms, but I had Robbie replace my door bottom too. I had a door bottom that had looked like a, I don't know, a rat or a mouse had kind of chewed the side. And at night, you could see about a two inch <laughs> air gap coming through my garage. This certainly wasn't helpful. And in fact, I did see a rat in my garage at one point a few years ago but this new dual bottom is gonna help. I might need to, at some point though, go to a track or a bottom seal here. If you know of any good products for that, let me know, I'm, I'm curious. And also on my new construction house, I'm gonna go to an insulated garage door. I don't know if you guys have uh, any uh, good success with insulated doors, but let me know, comment below if you have any. Okay, the next upgrade I wanted to tell you about were these from a company called Wirehide, and they have a couple of genius products. Now, my house, like I said, a remodel house. Uh, I don't have the wire hidden. This was a surface mount. This was probably done in the 90s or so before I bought the house. 
I didn't take the drywall off in here when I remodeled, so I didn't hide the wire. But new construction or remodel where you're pulling the drywall in the garage, you're gonna hide this in the wall, and then you're typically gonna have a low voltage plate right here with the wire coming through, you know, a low voltage box. And here's two cool things. Number one, this is from Wirehide as well. I don't know what they call these. Let's see if there's a name for them. Sensor shields. And you can see on my other garage door opener, here's your standard sensor right there. There's kind of a clip that mounts it on. And over the years, my kids have bumped these a bunch. The garage doesn't go down. I remember one time my wife calling me, I had to drive home from work uh, so I could figure out how to get the garage door down. And it was just the sensor had been bumped. So what this is, this is a pretty beefy piece of metal that actually mounts to the side of the garage. Let me pull one out so you can see it. What a genius idea by Wirehide. Again, no affiliation with these guys. This is not a paid advertisement. They did ship me one of these for free though. So what you're gonna do is mount this, screw this to the wall, and then your sensor is actually gonna go inside on this little uh, foam thing and kind of be protected and set up in there. That's really cool. I like that now you can hit this all you want with your bike coming in, with your car door, whatever it happens to be, and that's not gonna go anywhere. Pretty cool. Um, now the last thing which I did not install is this. They actually make a plate that has a kind of a tube gasket and some kind of a vinyl tubing. They sell it in either black uh, or white. And so now if I had a low voltage plate or a standard electrical plate, I could have that wire poking through here and then I can hide it with a tube and then this would mount right here so that all this would get hidden. I'm definitely gonna use this on my new construction house. Couldn't really retrofit it here, but I wanted to show you that. That's a pretty nice little upgrade. I think I'm gonna use that on the new house as well. And then lastly, uh, LiftMaster. Now again, no affiliation with these guys, but they did give me a garage door opener. Uh, for this project. And they've got some pretty sweet features on these lift masters I'll tell you about real fast. One of my favorite features is right here though. See that? It's a garage door camera. And what this does, and of course you can hide it if you don't wanna use a garage door camera, if you're worried about security or privacy from your network. But the idea with this is with your MyQ app, you can use the Amazon key, and now Amazon can do in garage delivery for you. The driver comes up, presses a button on his uh, phone or his device from Amazon. It opens your garage door. The camera turns on. It videos the driver placing a package in the garage, closing the door, verifying it's closed and walking away. And now your deliveries are safe in there all through that app. But actually the MyQ app, I have it on my Chamberlain garage door over here. So I've had it for about six or nine months now. My favorite feature of it is that you can schedule events. And my event that I've scheduled and has saved me a bunch of times is that at 10 p.m., I've got it set up that at 10 o'clock, it's gonna check the garage door. And if the garage door is in the open position, it's gonna automatically close it. This happens to me all the time. My kids are in and out at night. I forget to go check if the garage door is open. They put their bike away, they forgot to close the garage door. Now that app is automatically closing my garage door every night at 10 p.m. Good job by LiftMaster and Chamberlain on that MyQ app. Very, very cool app. And last thing I'll mention about these garage doors and also something you could think about for your garage is consider getting a battery backup. I'd never had one of these before. And if you've ever come home and the power's out, you know, that, that uh, garage door is dead. Check this out. This one has a little uh, 12 volt battery in there. And see that little red light? Mine's still charging, so it's not fully charged, but check it out. I can still close the garage door, even though we're totally unplugged. Now it's gonna close slower. You're not gonna get all the features. You know, your camera is not gonna work. Some of those other things aren't gonna work, but in an emergency, you're gonna be able to close it. And it says on the website or in the brochure that basically your garage door is gonna work for at least 24 hours without power. That's pretty cool. A bunch of other manufacturers make that as well. I'd highly recommend that feature. Uh, if you're considering a new garage door opener. Anyways, guys, kind of fun to think about my new garage at the house uh, and whether some of these features work. Let's actually close the video by going to check out my new garage. I'm gonna show you one more thing I'm gonna do over there. 
All right, guys, it's been a minute since we've been back to my new house under construction. I'm excited about this garage space. As I said earlier, I'm gonna be insulating this garage and I'm gonna be using some of those air selling techniques on the garage door itself here. But this garage door is a lot bigger than my old one. This is an eight foot compared to my seven foot and I'm 16 feet wide rather than those two single eight foot doors. This is gonna be a great garage. I've got a Mitsubishi mini split head that's gonna be right over here in the corner that will provide heating or cooling whenever I need it. But I've got something here in this new construction house that I wanted to show you about that I didn't want to retrofit in my current house, although I probably should, but you notice in my current house, I don't pull any cars in. Uh, and I also am really cautious about not storing gasoline in my garage. In this garage, my wife wants to pull her Suburban in. So I'm gonna be putting in one of these this is a garage specific exhaust fan. Now you could use another setup, but Tamarack makes this garage ventilator. It's a really nice all-in-one. Now this is their six inch model, but they make an eight inch model as well. And what's gonna happen is this guy will mount on the outside of the house. There's my intake right there. It's got a blower fan on there. And then on the inside, this is gonna come through the wall and I'll have a grill right here. And I'm gonna have it set on a motion sensor so that what'll happen is when the car pulls in, this will turn on with the motion sensor and it's gonna suck out, it's gonna exhaust all the fumes from my garage. You've all heard stories, especially during hurricane season about someone that was running a generator in their garage, somebody left their car running in there and somebody got carbon monoxide poisoning. That's real, real bad. You don't want those paint fumes, those pesticides, all that junk you're storing in the garage to get into your house. So by having a garage ventilator that's gonna turn on for a certain period of time, like 30 minutes after you pull in, now we can exhaust all those nasty things. But lastly, before we leave this garage, let me show you one more thing. All right, the last thing I wanna mention is we wanna do a really good job of air sealing between the house and the garage. Now it's not ideal really to have an attached garage when it comes to ultimate indoor air quality, but this is a remodel at an existing slab. I kind of had to go with this. So let me show you a couple steps that I took here that you might do on your remodels or new construction as well. First off, I solid sheathed the wall between the house and the garage with Huber zip system. And then you notice I used their tape. This is gonna do a really good job of air sealing these walls. Next, on the inside of the house, I used Rissan tape, which is by Sega, between the bottom plate and the concrete. And I'm gonna do another layer of that out here in the garage. On the inside, I use the thicker tape. Out here, I'm just gonna use the thinner tape. And basically, I'm gonna tape this joint right here, stuck to the concrete and stuck to the Huber zip, so I don't get any airflow whatsoever underneath that bottom plate. The next thing that you're gonna notice is that my eye joists run continuous from the kitchen all the way through the garage. That's supporting my second floor. Above me here is a boy's bedroom and a bath. So what I had the framers do is block out all those before my trades come. Normally I see those open on a job site, meaning the eye joists go through. You basically have air passing in there. We don't wanna do that. We wanna block those off and solid block them. Now we use the off cuts from the eye joist because that's a perfect fit, but you could also put plywood in there. Whatever you've got for joist, solid block that off so that when the trades come, they're gonna have to drill through with their wires or their pipes or whatever they're gonna put through there. You wanna have them drill through something solid. That way we can come back later with either tape or caulking or spray foam or something to air seal that. If I let the electricians run a bundle of 20 wires through one of those bays now, and that was open, there's no way I'd be able to air seal that. And we don't want any of this garage air connecting with the house air. And lastly, when it comes time to insulate this space, I'm also probably gonna use a little bit of closed cell foam on the bottom of the second floor. Anytime you have rooms over top of the garage, it's really hard to use traditional insulation and get a really, really good insulation job. So by spray foaming the underside of my Advantech subfloor upstairs, uh, that's my second floor deck, I'll be able to get a really good insulation, but I'm also gonna get a really good air seal from there. All right guys, that's really it. This was kind of a garage upgrade experiment video. I wasn't quite sure how those Thermatrax were gonna work. Um, I thought I was gonna like some of those wire hide products, but I'd never used them before. Uh, and of course the, the upgrade on the uh, LiftMaster was really cool. 
On this garage, I'm probably gonna do a side mount rather than a traditional overhead mount. That way I can take advantage of the sloped ceiling and not have a big motor in the center there. Sure has been fun building my house, I gotta say guys, but pay attention to your garages and not just air sealing from the garage itself, but air sealing between the house and the garage. Super, super important. If you're not currently a Bill Show subscriber, hit that subscribe button. We've got new content here every Tuesday and every Friday. And oh, by the way, go check out my buildshownetwork.com. I'll have a link in the description to sign up for our newsletter. Actually, I actually have six new videos a week publishing there from job sites around the country. Guys, follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show. Okay, guys, it's been about two weeks since we installed my uh, thermo tracks and you can see on the top they've actually come out i think the problem is my garage door installer just nailed it up and we didn't get this piece right there sandwiched very well so i'm gonna go ahead and take this down uh, we're gonna restaple it and then i'm gonna re-screw it on and i think that'll solve the problem okay i got it down and yes that appears to be the problem that double-sided tape did not uh, fully adhere on there. And I think because we weren't uh, sandwiching the nails very close to where this was going, we just didn't have enough pressure on there. So I'm gonna restaple this all the way down and then we're gonna screw it on and try and put the screws closer to where this goes. And I think that will solve our failing uh, weather strip problem. Hey guys, a little update on these thermo tracks. These are those tracks that have a bend in them so that it pushes my door against the weather strip. The weather strip on the jams has worked just fine, but the weather strip on my head, because it was nailed in, failed on me, uh, meaning the weather strip kind of came out. So I'm reattaching it. Uh, their double-sided tape didn't quite do it. So uh, I found that my little aero stapler is some real small quarter inch staples. Uh, I'm gonna do uh, a pattern of staples down here and then I'm gonna screw this in and I think that'll hold it. So stay tuned. Okay, a couple staples later, I used my little aero stapler, some quarter inch uh, staples, and now we're good to go. Now we're gonna put some screws in this thing and put it back on the track. <laughs>